past Allied pressure ponds von Rundstedt's Nazi legions in their drives through the Ardennes forest. The other enemy the Allies face is ice, covering every road of the shrinking bulge. But one way or another, American supplies and guns go forward, slipping and sliding. This is war against the weather. Sand helps, but mostly it takes grim determination by British and American forces under Field Marshal Montgomery in the north and General Bradley in the south to push on. Through icy forests and along slippery roads, the infantry of the American 7th Army slogs toward battle. This is one of the unarmed observation planes off to direct gunnery and tank operations from the sky. The snowbound tank below gets the signal to fire. Parts of Allied uniforms are captured. Here are some of the American overcoats covering their uniforms. The shoe pinches for every German, waking at last to inevitable defeat on every side. Sir Bertram Ramsey, naval commander-in-chief of the AEF, is dead. With his friend, Field Marshal Montgomery, he made the triumph at Sicily possible. And with Supreme Commander Eisenhower, he planned for victory on the Normandy beaches. D-Day, like Dunkirk and the African invasion, because of him made military history. Somewhere in France, his plane crashed. And now with the victory he planned in sight, Britain's greatest naval strategist, the man who shaped the pattern of modern invasion tactics, is mourned by all the Allies. Moscow on the 17th of January, the guns fire their victory salvos. For Marshal Stalin in an order of the day announces that our troops have captured the capital of our ally Poland, the city of Warsaw, the most important strategic center of German defenses. Warsaw, the Paris of Poland. Five and a half years ago in their beautiful city of which they were very proud, the people of Warsaw under their heroic mayor, Stefan Starzewski, held back the German conqueror for 18 bitter days. The whole world held its breath while Warsaw, cut off, surrounded and alone, fought through its bitter agony and fell. The women of Poland watched. The men of Poland marched into captivity. The children of Poland stayed in their battered houses. But back from Stalingrad and Rostov, 
from Moscow and Leningrad, while British and Americans battled in the west, the Red Army launched drive after drive in the east. In September of 1944, they stood on the Vistula, across from five years beleaguered Warsaw. On the 17th of January, Warsaw was set free once more. Meanwhile, far beyond the city, the Soviet attack drives westward. Marshal Zhukov commands in the center. Marshal Rokossovsky in the north. Marshal Konyev in the south. In the Kremlin, Marshal Stalin gives them the order, on to Berlin. war on the Western Front. Daily it mounts in intensity. What one combined mission means is shown by these pictures of the United States Air Force in action over Germany, attacking marshalling yards, oil plants, factories. Here is a story one day's communique tells of the men, of the planes, of the war's progress. From a field in Allied territory, marauders of the 9th Air Force take off. On this raid, there will be medium bombers of the 9th and heavy bombers of the 8th, accompanied by their fighters. There will be flak, sudden death, but the rest go on. The bombs go on the target. and they head for home. Enemy fighters are sighted, and the American fighter escort dives into action. These are German planes part of the 900 shot down by the Allies during the Rundstedt Offensive. Fortress is on fire. The crew bails out. Still, the Germans attack. the last of them. Now it's homeward bound. Communique will read, mission accomplished, such a target bombed, so many of the enemy destroyed, so many of our bombers are missing. <laughs> 